Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to Tech Talks. And this is DevOps Edition. Today, we will be focusing on serverless monitoring using Splunk. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. So a little bit about myself. My name is Amit Sharma. I do product marketing at Splunk and I'm focused on Splunk's observability products. Previously, I was in the same role at SignalFX. SignalFX is the real-time cloud monitoring company that Splunk acquired in 2019. Before SignalFX, I was at AppDynamics and Cisco. So I've had quite a bit of experience in observability and monitoring space, but the vast majority of my career has been as a software engineer in different roles and at different companies. So what are we gonna talk about today? We will start by discussing why customers are adopting serverless, what their journey looks like, what are some of the operational challenges with serverless, and how do you solve them by effectively monitoring using Splunk. We will have a live demo and we will give you a list of resources to help you start your serverless journey. And we're gonna be using AWS Lambda for the implementation of serverless. So what are your business or technical initiatives? You want to go to market faster. Speed to market is a big competitive differentiating factor. It's a competitive advantage. You want to keep the total cost of ownership as low as possible while maintaining high performance, resilience, and scalability of applications. And certainly, you never want to get breached. Splunk Cloud in general, and serverless in particular, help with all these initiatives. First, on productivity and cost. Deloitte did a survey of CIOs and 80% believe that developers' time is not efficient, efficiently utilized. 80% is a staggering number. Let's see how serverless can help de DevOps and developer teams achieve high productivity. Well, first, by offloading operational concerns. Right? Running serverless applications on Lambda does not require managing a long-lived host or application instance. Infrastructure is completely abstracted out, enabling teams to focus on their application code. Scalability. Lambda platform, for example, creates just enough runtime environment to handle any load. If one instance of function is required, then Lambda will instantiate only one such environment. On the other hand, if millions of these requests come, then Lambda will scale efficiently without any effort from DevOps teams or developers cost. Um, Lambda environments get closest to the true usage-based cost in the cloud as they are priced by number of invocation, duration of function execution, and memory required to run the function. And security, so shared security model relieves operational burden for infrastructure and functions can be executed in isolation uh, of each other. So let's see um, the journey of um, computing evolution. So first we started by physical machines. It requires uh, guess planning. We no, do not really know what the load would be today or uh, six months from now. These physical machines run for years on premises. Uh, they are CapEx, so heavy investments upfront. And typically, you do not release new applications that often so low innovation factors, and you deploy a few times a year, so deploy um, in months. Now, that uh, virtual machine solves some of that problem. So virtual machines, hardware independence, you can run virtual machine um, in, in uh, on-premises in the cloud. Um, it has faster provisioning times, minutes or hours, um, in the cloud, if you're running, then you can have CapEx to OpEx. Uh, it, it is much more easily scalable. It is elastic because you can create virtual machines on demand. It definitely adds speed and agility and reduce maintenance. Then came containerization. So the first two points here are talking about the portability. 
So platform independence and consistent runtime environment, the container will run just the same on um, Amazon as it would on on-premises or Azure Cloud or, or Google Cloud. The other points are higher resource utilization. By bin packing, you are efficiently utilize, utilizing uh, the, the compute resources. Easy and faster deployment because of the uh, standardization and portability, you can easily deploy applications and the applications will start within seconds. You have uh, namespaces and C groups isolation. Um, so uh, you can run applications within the same virtual machine, but isolated due to the different containers that you are running in. And the, the final phase of this evolution is uh, serverless. So continuous scaling. So any any time requests start to um, um, more requests come, then serverless will uh, scale independently, continuously. Fault tolerance is is built in. You pay for the number of invocations of the server, the true usage based, and for the infrastructure, there's no no main maintenance. Um, so. So this is like the, like the journey that um, typically customers would follow. However, you can start, if you are cloud native, you can start by writing your application in serverless. You don't have to go through these, these phases or stages. So that is why we are seeing or witnessing a paradigm shift. Now, according to Gartner, 75% of organizations are using or planning to use serverless functions within the next two years. And these are, these are the reasons. So if serverless is that great, why every single application, every single workload at all the companies that is not serverless? Now Lambda or serverless enables companies to increase the pace of software innovation and control cost. It also presents its own set of monitoring and observability challenges. The first one is no agent. The agent-based approach no longer works. Since serverless separates code from infra infrastructure running it, agents cannot be installed to collect and transmit observability data. There is no place to batch the data. So traditional monitoring tools that use batch and query architecture do not work in serverless environments as they are designed for streaming analytics. Using traditional tools in serverless will result in dropped data points and consequently incorrect analytics. Scraping metrics from cloud APIs, such as CloudWatch, results in slow insights at a typical five minute resolution. Or if, if you're calling the API too frequently, it may consume the API limits. When you invoke a Lambda function, the request is processed in a new container environment. When a function has not been executed for some time, or when you need to process more concurrent requests, Lambda will start a new environment to execute your functions. The initialization of the runtime of your code leads to additional latency. This latency is usually referred to as cold start. If you have several Lambda function invocation in a chain, latencies add up and result in poor user experience. Since Lambda functions are built for the duration in millisecond, your cloud cost can easily balloon up if latencies are not managed. So the net net, the point is traditional tools do not work in the serverless environment and real time visibility into latency is required to control cost and deliver a flawless user experience. Enter Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring. Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring is a real-time streaming metric, metrics platform. It works uh, for your cloud applications, cloud deployments, as well as on-premises and hybrid cloud monitoring uh, uh, so solutions. It is purpose-built for technologies, the cloud-native technologies like containers, Kubernetes, serverless monitoring. It not only detects and provides out of the box monitoring for serverless functions or infrastructure or cloud services, but also 
it has automatic service discovery and it has 200 plus pre-built integrations for immediate visibility and monitoring. And uh, in addition to high resolution, low latency monitoring, um, it gives real time alerts and driven by analytics for preciseness and accurate accuracy. Lambda extensions. So we're going to be serverless monitoring is a part of Splunk infrastructure monitoring. It is, it is a feature. It's not um, a net new product. Um, and it uses Lambda extensions. So Splunk solutions enable DevOps teams to easily understand the performance, usage, bottlenecks across the entire application spectrum. Whether your application consists of 100% serverless or a mix of serverless and traditional apps, you can monitor your entire cloud, entire stack with the Splunk infrastructure monitoring in real time. So the benefit of Lambda extension is you can write your functions any language and within language any runtime. You can automatically collect telemetry data without, without developers having to instrument code. And we also have wrapper functions. So for business KPIs um, that you want to capture, you can use wrapper functions and send to Splunk in real time without incurring any, um, any performance uh, performance issues. So, but today's, uh, we are focusing on uh, Lambda extensions because this is the easiest way to get data, telemetry data out of your serverless functions. Now, extensions extend Lambda's invocation lifecycle. And um, they only run when there's something to do and not ne needlessly run when there's nothing to do. They can also continue to run after the function invocation has finished to send telemetry data out about that particular invocation. They can initialize and work before the runtime starts and can perform uh, clean up tasks before the execution environment is spun down. So let's, so there are two types of extension, internal and ex external extensions. Uh, we are talking about external extension here. An external extension runs as an independent process, separate from the runtime within the execution environment. You can see the process boundaries here. So you have your function and extensions running side by side your uh, Lambda function. It can start before the runtime process and continues to run after the function invoke is fully processed. Because external extensions run as their own processes, you can write them in different languages than the function. So your function can be in Java, uh, your extension can be in Go. Um, and this is best done as a self-contained compiled binary, which is uh, compatible with all supported runtime. So when in the previous slide I was talking about any language, any runtime, this is how um, that that capability is delivered. There is a lot of talk about resources and security. You're running your extension alongside your function. Uh, what about resources and security? So time now to look at how extension work with your Lambda functions in terms of uh, resources and security as extension run in the same execution environment. They share resources with the functions such as CPU, memory, and disk. Extensions also need to be compatible with the associated operating system. And if extension need any network access, for example, you must apply network egress rules to uh, function configuration. In addition, extensions share the same IAM role in security context as the function. So extension has access to everything the function has access to. And if the extensions need access to something that must be included in the function IAM's role. You can include up to 10 extensions per function. And these can be packaged in up to uh, five Lambda layers. And we'll talk about Lambda layers and I'll show it in the demo as well. Um, for the, there are some size limitations. For example, um, the container image, if you're using function 
um, extension as a container image that is 10 gig 10 GB um, you can um, build and include extension file within a container image so let's talk about performance impact there are a few things to bear in mind with extensions extensions can impact the performance of your function because they share the function resources if uh, extension performs compute intensive, you may see functions execution duration increase. The function's response is sent back to the, the, the client which invoked the function uh, synchronously. So that, that may also increase the latency. Or you could do it via asynchronous, asynchronously, for example, the simple queuing uh, service. So there are some implications so you can increase the memory to the function and proportionately that will increase the CPU and network. So these are some of the considerations to keep in mind. And now we are going to look at uh, these things in action. Lambda extension for Splunk in action. So first we are going to look at Splunk extension for AWS Lambda and uh, uh, you can, this is all open source available on GitHub. And this is really easy to get started, install and get, get started with. So there are a couple of ways, either you can use, um, you can include the extension within your Docker file, within your container image, or you can just use the uh, Lambda layer, the layer extension layer, um, in your function. So we're gonna take a look at, this is the easiest way to get started and we're gonna take a look at this. So um, uh, for every, um, for, every um, available, uh, for every region, there is a Lambda extension layer. So you choose the, the appropriate layer for your region and uh, you configure uh, your function with that layer. So this is, I'm going to give you an example of that. So this is my AWS um, console, and I have a bunch of uh, Lambda functions deployed here. For example, this demo function, it has two Lambda layers. We're going to take a look at, this is the Splunk Lambda layer, and this is the ARN that we copied from, uh, from the GitHub uh, link. And what we will do is we will configure the environment variables. So these are the environment um, environment variables that you have to tell the Lambda layer. Uh, and all of these are available here as well. So these are the environment variables that you have to, uh, that you have to provide uh, the extension. Um, and I have done that. And basically that's it. So as you attach Lambda layer to your function, and when you test your function, um, this, will, uh, this will send all the telemetry data to Splunk. So now we are gonna take a look at um, the what data or what metrics that you get uh, out of the box from serverless execution. So this is the Splunk Observability Cloud. We are focused on infrastructure so let's take a look. Infrastructure, you're looking at all the services uh, from AWS that, uh, that you have deployed. This is our demo environment. Um, so we have a um, lot of, uh, lot of um, services that we are running here. So we are looking at Lambda functions here. And by the way, uh, what we did previously was uh, all that we needed to get all of this out of the box visibility. So we have a list of all the Lambda, Lambda functions. We have throttles, errors, duration, cold starts. Um, and we talked about what cold starts are. So we have 100 active functions. Uh, we have, we can slice and dice, grub by um, any server, um, any tag that we have uh, for these functions. For example, the runtime, the function name, or language, um, account ID, right? So we can quickly uh, slice and dice by that. And you can uh, take a look at all these um, performance characteristics that are available to us. 
the number of active functions by AWS account, in which region they are de deployed. But, but these are the critical metrics, how many invocations happened and how many errors uh, uh, did your functions encounter. There's a heat map you can take a look at a particular function. Uh, what happened to this function? And then you can look at that functions and um, get granular visibility into uh, what uh, particular um, to that particular function. You have a total a number of total errors. You have average durations across all functions. Um, and then you are also looking at the throttle. And uh, if the function is getting pull start, then they will be throttled. Now, uh, provision concurrency is uh, something that is advisable if you're uh, getting a, if you want to have a consistent um, experience or consistent latency. Uh, but also you got to be uh, careful that there is a cost associated to provision concurrency. So you, you want to make sure that there is no spillover. Uh, you are not wasting your uh, provision concurrency that you have. So all these, uh, at, a, at a glance, at a bird's eye view, all these information um, is available. To you, you can look at any particular function and then get granular details about that particular function. So um, I can take a look at this particular function and I can see what is um, uh, like a granular details, what's happening here. Now, I also want to show you um, an application that I deployed. By the way, this is um, an application that is available for um, serverless workshop that AWS has produced. So uh, it is using um, uh, Lambda functions as well as DynamoDB, as well as um, simple notification service. So it's a full-fledged applications and it is called um, Theme Park. So let's, um, let's, the reason why I wanna show you this is you are getting visibility not only on the Lambda functions that we saw previously, but also on ev everything else that we have deployed here. So DynamoDB instances, SNS topics, uh, if you have um, uh, Elastic Block Storage or EC2, all these um, AWS services that you're consuming here, um, and we have many more here um, in our demo environment, um, you are getting visibility from one single pane of glass. So from one single solution, you can uh, take a look at what is going on in your cloud environment. So, um, so we saw how easy it is to start monitoring your serverless performance by adding it by by adding a Splunk extension for AWS Lambda as a Lambda layer. And Lambda layer is again is very um, um, straightforward to uh, to add. Um, so I have two layers here. The first one is the Splunk Lambda extension. You add a layer, you give the ARN, and which we can get from here, specific to your region. And that's pretty much it, right? You provide the environment variables, um, which is specific to your Splunk infrastructure monitoring um, environment. So let's get back to slides to conclude. Thank you for your time. And let's continue the conversation on community.splunk.com. And you can search for Lambda or serverless and you could uh, get the discussions that have happened and the best practices. Um, you can share what you have, um, how your serverless journey has been. And um, if you are, um, uh, from your experience, you can share. And um, there's a discussion on Splunk Tech Talk section and you can search, vote and request uh, if you want an enhancement in the product, if you want a particular feature, you could do that too. So with that, thank you again so very much for your time.